Learning Outcome 5.1 Understand the relation between the discrete time Fourier transform and the continuous time Fourier transform. In Chapter 4, we introduced the analysis equation and synthesis equation for the Fourier transform. Now we're talking about the discrete time Fourier transform, which also has an analysis equation and a synthesis equation. You need these on your note sheet. Let's compare the two. For the discrete time Fourier transform, you'll notice that now we have an e to the j omega. This again is just notation to tell you that we're talking about the discrete time Fourier transform as opposed to the continuous time Fourier transform. I'll introduce a little bit more about this soon. We have a summation instead of an integral, and an x of n instead of an x of t. That's because we're talking about discrete time, or discrete signals, x of n, instead of continuous time signals, x of t. And if we have a discrete signal, x of n, we need a summation instead of an integral. For both, we have an e to the minus j omega in our variable, which is n if we have a signal x of n, and t if we have a signal x of t. So these two equations are actually very similar. Similarly, the synthesis equation, x of n instead of x of t, 1 over 2 pi for both, integral for both, x, e to the j omega for discrete, x to j omega for continuous, and then e to the j omega and our time variable n or t d omega. Note that our integral is only integrating over 2 pi. Again, this is any one period 2 pi and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. So both are very, very similar. And because there's a similarity between the continuous time Fourier transform, with which you are now relatively familiar, and the discrete time Fourier transform, which I'm presenting to you now, almost everything you learned in Chapter 4 can be directly applied to Chapter 5. Therefore, we will spend very little time on Chapter 5 and just have you make a few adaptations and move on. Recall in Chapter 7, when we were talking about sampling, if we're doing impulse train sampling, we have our time signal, which has a spectrum, and the spectrum for our sampled signal will be repeating every omega s units. Well, what if we are sampling at a period of 1? Thinking about our signal x of n, where n takes on values from negative infinity to positive infinity, such as 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, therefore t is 1. If t is 1, what's omega s? Omega s will be 2 pi over t, which will just be 2 pi if t is 1. Therefore, omega s is 2 pi. We said that our spectrum repeats itself every omega s units, Therefore, for a discrete signal, x of n, it will have a spectrum that repeats itself every 0 to 2 pi units. That is the reason why this integral only goes over any one period 2 pi, because our spectrum, x e to the j omega, repeats itself every 2 pi units. And similar to when we were looking at the integral for the Fourier series, it doesn't matter which 2 pi you use. Now back to this e to the j omega notation. What does that mean? If j is square root of negative 1, and omega varies from negative infinity to plus infinity, let's think of what values this takes on. e to the j 0 in our complex space is at plus 1, and as omega increases, it goes around in a circle. And as omega reaches 2 pi, we're at the same place that we were when omega was 0. When omega is 4 pi, we're at the same place we were when omega is 0. So similar to the fact that our spectrum repeats every 2 pi, e to the j omega repeats every 2 pi. And so this can help remind you that we have a periodic spectrum with a period of 2 pi. OK, back to more similarities with the continuous time Fourier transform. In chapter 4, I introduced table 4.1, which has properties of Fourier transforms and how to use them. Well, let's take a look at some of these 
and compare these with the properties in Table 5.1, which is on page 391 of your book. Linearity. In Table 4.1 we had linearity, that if you're given a x of t plus b y of t, the Fourier transform of that will be a, the transform of x, plus b, the transform of y. Looking in Table 5.1, we also have a linearity property. Instead of x of t, we have x of n, because we're talking discrete signals, not continuous signals. And likewise, if we have a times x of n plus b times y of n, we will have a times the transform of x of n plus b times the transform of y of n. Same thing, and it works the same way as it did before, and you should use it the same way you did in Chapter 4. Time shifting. For continuous time, our variable is t, and we shift by an amount t naught. Now our variable is n, we shift by an amount n naught. And the transform is multiplied by e to the minus j omega and the amount in time with which we shifted. Likewise, for the discrete time Fourier transform, our transform is multiplied by e to the minus j omega times the amount by which we are shifting. Same thing, use them the same way you did before. Frequency shifting. Again, e to the minus j omega dot, however much we're shifting in frequency. t is our variable, n is our variable. Our function is x of t, our function is x of n. And we're shifting a certain amount in frequency, we're shifting a certain amount in frequency. Same thing. Time reversal. If we're going to see the omega, replace with a negative. Convolution. Very important. Convolution in time is multiplication in frequency. Convolution in time is still multiplication in frequency. Multiplication. Multiplication in time was 1 over 2 pi convolution in frequency. Now multiplication in time is sort of 1 over 2 pi convolution in frequency. You should think of it this way, but you need to really look. The table here, the integral does matter because we're only going to integrate over one period. Remember that the spectrum repeats itself, and so therefore we have multiple components of it. We only need to do the convolution over one period of that flip and shift. But the same basic idea. You don't use this nearly as much for the discrete signals as we do for the continuous time signals. See, I told you you already know all this stuff. Take everything you know from Chapter 4, replace omega with either j omega, Take a spectrum that goes from negative infinity to plus infinity with unique values and replace it by one that repeats every two pi values. Most of the rest of the ideas stay the same. In Learning Outcome 5.2, we'll do some examples and show you they're the same. I think you're going to be great.